Today we're going to turn to Genesis chapter 25, verse 23. I am so excited to share with you what I, I feel God has, has, has brought upon my heart. This is, this is so cool. It's so amazing. And it's really answered a lot of questions for me. And this is, again, the, the story of Jacob and Esau, Isaac's sons, Abraham's grandchildren. Genesis 25, 23. The Lord said to her, two nations are in your womb. And two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other. And the older will serve the younger. The older will serve the younger. How many people here are the baby of the family? Don't you wish you had that verse when you were a kid? <laughs> I mean, it's one thing to say, come on, mom said, give it back. But when you say God said... How do you argue with that one? So the birth of Jacob and Esau was a very unusual one. Esau came out first, and Jacob had a hold of his heel, almost saying, whoa, bro, hold on for a second, get back here. I want this one. But he didn't quite make it. And Esau was very red and hairy. You know, the people of the Old Testament pull no punches when it comes to naming their kids. I mean, think about it. You know what Esau means? Hairy. It means hairy. Now think about it. Could you imagine his first day at school, and this poor kid has got hair from head to foot. Class, I want you to meet Harry. That's going to do nothing for anybody's self-esteem, right? But Esau got lucky because Esau was a strong boy, and he became a skilled hunter. And being a skilled hunter, he was daddy's boy because anything that came across that plane... He could kill it, clean it, and grill it, and have it on daddy's plate by evening. And Isaac was happy about that. I could just see him, that's my boy. Esau, I'm hungry. Pew, comes back, Pew, that's my boy. In fact, I picture him walking with his arm around him, introducing him to his buddies with a voice like Darth Vader. This is my son. So proud of him. Jacob, on the other hand, he was mama's boy. He liked to hang around the tents. Like do a little cooking, helping mom out, you know. And one day Esau comes home, and he's uh, had a rough day, didn't catch anything. He comes into the house, and he smells something really good. <sighs> he probably thought it was mom. Goes into the kitchen, and there's Jacob stirring a big pot of soup. He's going, wow, this smells amazing. I can picture him. Jacob, man, cuff some of that. Jacob said, no, my soup. Oh, come on, man. I'm starving. I'm going to die. That's what it says he said. So you know what that means. I can't help but think Jacob and Esau were teenagers. They had to have been. <laughs> Am I right? You know why? I can tell you why. Because many, many years ago, I was a teenager. I get it. And we raised two teenagers. And our boy would come home and say, Mom, is there something to eat? I'm starving. I'm going to die. And she'd say, yeah, just make yourself a sandwich. She'd go, what, I got to make it? Forget, I'll have some Skittles. I'm going to die. Come on, Esau, you're not going to die. In fact, if you want to hide anything from a teenager, just put it behind the first row of anything in the fridge. They'll never find it. Never find it. In fact, you really want to get complicated, get some unflavored yogurt, put it right across the first row. You can hide a million bucks back there, and they'll never find it. Never. They won't go to that trouble. Jacob is pretty smart, and he says, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some soup, but give me your birthright. I want your birthright. And Esau thinks long and hard about it and says, okay. It's as simple as that. And he has some soup, and he probably thought, that Jacob was going to forget all about it. Now, if you've read this story, you know how it ends. Jacob's mom and Jacob, at the time Isaac was passing, was going to make sure he was getting what was coming to him. And he did. He did. And so, therefore, the older shall serve the younger. Now, I want you to know something. That phrase, the older shall serve the younger, is not how things were created to be. 
That's not how things are supposed to be. The younger shall serve the older. That's the way things were made. Respect older. But you see, this is not the only isolated case in the Bible either. It's not. Isaac, Jacob and Esau's dad, he was not the firstborn. He was the secondborn of Abraham. His son Ishmael was the firstborn. Now think about that. God was saying to Abraham and, and Sarah, I'm going to give you a son. I'm promising you a son. Now after a little while, what happened? Sarah's going, come on, Abraham. Look at us. There's no way we can possibly have a son. Look at us. I think we need to help God out. We need to help him out with his promises. And Abraham, well, maybe you're right. I don't know. I guess. And she gives him her maidservant. He sleeps with her. Gives birth to Ishmael. And then God shows up and says, my goodness, what are you doing? Abraham, what are you doing? I promised you a child. This is not what I promised. Do you really think I need help with my promises? I don't need any help with my promises. Do you see what you have done? You have brought me into this now. So I had swore that your son was going to be a father of a great nation. I'm going to also make Ishmael a father of a great nation. But I'll tell you what. Because you have done this, they're going to be rivals forever. And if you look today, the Arabs and Jews are always at each other. And peace will not come until the Prince of Peace comes. I don't care what anybody says. He's the only one that can instill peace among the two brothers. The only one. Every time you see this account in the Bible where the older serves the younger, it's usually surrounded by a result of a lust or a trust in the flesh. Abraham, they looked at the flesh. Nah, this can't be right. God must be wrong. We need to trust in a younger flesh. Someone that can, that can give me a son. No. Esau was a lust in the flesh. Oh, it smells so good. What's a birthright? I want it now. I want this now. It's a lust in the flesh. This goes on. You can take Joseph. There's another one. I had a dream, brothers. Your wheat sheaves were all bowing down to mine. And the brothers are saying, sorry. <laughs> I don't think so, you little pipsqueak. We're not bowing down to you. What happened? They thought they'd take matters in their own hands. We're going we're gonna to clean house. We're going to make things better. No, they didn't. I mean, it worked out. But that was because God intervened. Even David was the youngest of the family. The older shall serve the younger. I want you to think about something for a second. We are born into this world a natural way. We are born of the flesh. And then at some point in our lives, we have realized the errors of our ways, and we have looked to God for help. And we have accepted the salvation and freedom of Jesus Christ into our lives. And in doing that, we are born again into the Spirit. The older, which is the flesh, must give way to the Spirit. The older will serve the younger. In fact, when you start having feelings or, or agendas and you start thinking, this is what I want, this is what I know, this is who I am, that's starting to trust into the flesh. That means you need to tell old man flesh, you're a dead man walking. Lay down and shut up. The older will serve the younger. The ways of the world is to lust after the flesh. The ways of the world is to get what we want now. We don't want to wait. Waiting is, is, is stupid. I, I can't understand it. I want to feel good now. Just do it. Worry about it later. It's the opposite to the spirit. It's the opposite. You need to tell the flesh, lay down. When you have temptations in your mind, you need to tell that flesh to lay down. Stop it. Lay back down. You're dead. I'm not listening to any of this. 
Because remember, and I, I spoke a couple weeks ago, our eyes are flesh. We can only see what was. When you're outside and you look at the stars at night, and there's so many beautiful stars, and we say, wow, the stars are beautiful tonight, do you realize those stars may not even be there? Because it takes so long for the light to get to the earth that we're only seeing what was, not what is. In fact, even look around right now. By the time you focus on whatever you're focusing on and the light comes back to your eye, it's already happened. It's what was. The only way you can see what is is through the eyes of faith. The only way. That's why the opposite of faith is not doubt. It's sight. If you can see everything, understand everything, everything's working out for you, what do you need faith for? You don't. Our eyes are eyes of the flesh. We only can see what was. We cannot see what is. In Revelations 1, 8, God says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, who was, who is, and who is to come. I am the Lord of time. I created time. I am without time. I am without time. I am the Lord of your past, the Lord of your present, and the Lord of your future. If you want to know what's happening in your life, look to God. Don't trust this. Don't trust the carnal mind. You got a business deal and everything seems to be lining up. This is good. This is good. You know what? That's the time you need to pray. That's the time you need to look to God and say, okay, this looks too good, Lord. I'm understanding this way too much. I'm understanding this. I, 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 is this of you? I can't tell you firsthand experiences. My wife can. How many times we trusted people because everything looked good and I did not consult of God where we ended up. I went through a bankruptcy because of that. Had I have trusted God first, that wouldn't have happened. James 1, 5 to 8. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault. In other words, he's not going to be mad at you. Not going to be mad at you. And it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. Because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Let me tell you what that does not say. That does not say that you're asking something of God and you're doubting while you're asking, and you're, 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 maybe it's something, a, a, a healing or a financial difficulty or whatever, and you're asking God, can you please, I really need help, and you've got this doubt in your mind, Lord, I don't want to doubt, and God says, nope, too bad you doubted. I'm angry with you. Don't ask me for anything else. That is not what that is saying. What this is saying is that if you lack wisdom, if you need direction in your life, if you need advice from God, and he gives it to you, and it is not just a voice in your head, oh, that must be God. He gives it to you. It's confirmed many different ways so that you know without a doubt that it is him. It is him speaking to you, and he has given you this. And you turn around and say to him, uh, it doesn't really work for me, Lord. Nah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. I think I need to do something else. Then God is saying, are you kidding me? Really? You think you know what's best for your life? You think you know what's best for your marriage? You think you know what's best for your business? You know what's best for your church? Are you serious? Well, then you go ahead and do it. Let me know how that works for you. But don't ask me for anything else because I'm not listening. I have spoken. I'm not listening if you're not going to trust what I have to say. So it's not a question of doubting if you know it's him. I want you to think about this. After Saul had messed up royally, Samuel was told by God, I want you to go to the house of Jesse, and I want you to anoint one of his children to be king of Israel. So he shows up, and Jesse's waiting for him. And he brings out his oldest son. 
He's tall and strong looking because Saul was a bad dude, man. Saul was tall and he was, he was intimidating looking, right? So he comes and all of a sudden there's David's oldest brother and he's tall and strong and Samuel's going, this has got to be him. This has got to be who I'm anointing for sure. And he goes to put his hand on his head and God says, nope, Mm -mm, not him. Okay, so he goes to the next kid. Nope, not him. All right. Nope, 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 nope. Seven times. Imagine if Samuel would have went, okay, this isn't making sense. I've gone through all the brothers here. There's nobody else. I, I must have misunderstood. I'm going to go back and anoint the first one. But he didn't. He could have. But he said, no, 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 no. I'm here in the Lord, and the Lord's telling me no. So, Jesse, do you have any other kids? Well, yeah. There's David. He's out in the, in the field right now. I, I didn't think he'd be any good here, so I, I, I just let him work. Well, you need to bring him in. Are you sure, Samuel? This ain't making sense. Just bring him in. And then comes this little shepherd boy. Walking in, Samuel puts his hand on his head. I anoint you. I anoint you. And the brothers are freaking out. The brothers are going, oh my goodness, how can this possibly be? It's David. It's David. Come on. Look at, we're stronger. Why would he be king of Israel someday? Look at, he's got no experience. He's not strong. He's been taking care of sheep his whole life. And he's a musician to boot. Why would he be king of Israel? And God says, because he is a man after my own heart. I want to tell you something this morning. If you are a man, and I don't care how tall, how strong, how smart you are, if you are after God's own heart, you're unstoppable. Women here, if you are after God's own heart, you are unstoppable. If we, and my prayer, my prayer, if we can be a church after God's own heart, we are will be unstoppable. You want to talk about revival? Can't happen any other way. Can't happen any other way. We must be after God's own heart. We must take our agendas, we must take our thing that we think is right, be accountable to God, join together, and be after his own heart. And I promise you, you wait and see what God does. You wait and see what he does. The older serves the younger. Jesus Christ came to this earth, the ancient of days, one who has been here since the beginning of time and before. And he came to this earth because there was a trusting and a lusting of the flesh. He needed to come. And he came to this earth and he said what? The Son of Man has not come to this world to be served but to serve. From the very beginning, all of these things about the older serving the younger was pointing that God is going to come down. The ancient of days will come down and serve man so that all things can be reversed. Isn't that beautiful? That is so beautiful. You know, in Hebrew, the same word for blessing is also kneeling. Baruch, it's the same word. The great kneeling is when Christ knelt before man and took the punishment upon his head so that we could share in the birthright. He gave us. Now all things are reversed, and we serve Christ. Isn't that beautiful? This is a love story. This is a love story. So I want you to do something for me for a second. I want everybody to stand up, okay? I want everybody to stand up. 
I want you to point your toes as straight as you possibly can. I want you to stand and point your toes as straight as you possibly can. And I want you to remember this. Your toes point to the spirit. Your heel points to the flesh. There is a saying in Jamaica, and it says, the heel don't go before toe. You got that? Let's say that together. The heel don't go before toe. So when you're feeling tempted, when you're feeling everything coming down, all these worries and anxiety and fear and everything coming into your life, look at your feet. The heel don't go before toe. Old man, you're a dead man walking, lay down. The Holy Spirit leads. He leads. And I want to tell you something. My wife always told me, if you want to remember something, a piece of scripture or whatever, put it in a song, and you'll never forget it. And she's right. She's right. So I wrote this little silly song. Thank you, my guitar. Hold on. It goes like this. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with. Holy Spirit, have your way with me, yeah. You are my counselor. You are the comforter of my heart. Like I have never heard, you ignite the word in my heart. You teach me everything. Love songs that Father sings to the rhythm of you point to the only one Testify about the Son From His gift of mercy We are blessed So Holy Spirit have your way with Holy Spirit have your way with Holy Spirit have your way with Me yeah. Holy Spirit have your way with Holy Spirit have your way with Holy Spirit have your way with I don't know how to pray No, just what to say You speak for me When the enemy is near And my mind is full of fear You strengthen me Transform my deepest thoughts I will resist you not awakening me This gospel of grace Renew my mind to the truth that they there is nothing I can do, what needs to be done, has been done in Christ's soul. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Let me hear you now. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. This side, let me hear you. Easy song, right? You guys know. Let's go. Yama. All right. Everybody. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Transform my deepest thoughts. Transform my I will resist you not awakening me This gospel of grace Renew my mind to the truth That there is nothing I can do What needs to be done Has been done in Christ's soul Holy Spirit, have your way with me 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 Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way with. 
Holy Spirit, have your way with Holy Spirit, have your way with me. Thank you. You may be seated. I just want to say one more thing. Jacob said to Rebecca, his mother, but my brother Esau is a hairy man while I have smooth skin. What if my father touches me? I would appear to be tricking him and would bring down a curse on myself rather than a blessing. His mother said to him, son, let the curse fall on me. Just do what I say. Go and get them for me. In other words, he went and got a goat and she skinned the goat and prepared Isaac's favorite food. So he went and got them and brought them to his mother and she prepared some tasty food just the way his father liked it. Then Rebekah took the best clothes of Esau, her older son, which she had in the house, and put them on her younger son, Jacob. She also covered his hands and the smooth part of his neck with the goat skins. And she handed to her son, Jacob, the tasty food and the bread she had made. He went to his father and said, My father, yes, my son. He answered, Who is it? For Isaac, sight wasn't very good. Jacob said to his father, I, I, I'm, I'm Esau. I'm Esau, your firstborn. And I've done, if you, as, as you told me, I went out and I killed the game and brought you back your favorite dish. Please sit up and eat some of my game so you may give me your blessing. Isaac asked his son, how did you find it so quickly, my son? The, the, the Lord God, he gave me success, he replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, well, come near so I can touch you, my son, to know whether you are really my son Esau or not. And Jacob went close to his father Isaac, who touched him and said, the voice is the voice of Jacob. But the hands are of Esau. I did not recognize him, for his hands were hairy like those of his brother Esau, so he proceeded to bless him. Are you really Esau? He asked. I am. Then he said, my son, bring me some of your game to eat so that I may give you my blessing. Jacob brought it to him and he ate, and he brought some wine and he drank. And then the father Isaac said to him, come here, my son, and kiss me. So he went and kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, it must be Esau. It must be Esau. He blessed him. Jesus Christ died for me. When I stand before the Father, he blinds himself to all of my sin. He blinds himself to my past. He remembers it no more. And he reaches out, he touches my arm, and he says, you sound like Ray, but I feel my son Jesus. The covering is on you. The covering of my son is on you. Come, this is your birthright. Come to me. Most beautiful story ever. Father God, I want to thank you so much. I want to thank you so much, Lord. Every day that I'm alive, I realize how much more you have given to me, how much mercy you have shown me. I can't fathom it. It doesn't make sense. Why would you forgive someone like me? Why? My carnal mind can't handle it. My eyes can't see it. But yet it's real because I see it through the eyes of faith. And when we all accept Jesus, 
It's through the eyes of faith. Because now we see what is and what will be. What was does not matter. Father, bless everyone here today. Bring about in our hearts, God, the assurity of your salvation and your peace. Let us be a church that is after your own heart. In the name of Christ, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I believe that was a good word from the Lord, don't you? We want Jesus in his fullness. We want, we want everything right within us. And we know it's only as we let him have his way and trust in that Holy Spirit of God. And uh, you know that little, that little song? I, I like that little song.